A growing number of inquiries have been received from travelers who have taken hundreds of flights. Flying to me is uh, excitement, adventure, sheer magic. Uh, what I want to ask you, Farah, is uh, you, you know what's that dangerous or difficult part in flying? Farah, traveling in a uh, bigger car is uh, considered to be safer than traveling in the smaller car. So my question is, in a similar way, uh, is flying on a bigger airplane is safer than flying on a smaller one? Hey, Farah, I like to know. Just wanted to check. Can uh, pilots have tattoos? Hi Farah, do pilots get scared? I'm here to clear the air and provide you with a better understanding of flying from a pilot's perspective. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, to like and share and comment as to what you think about the video and what the next content you want me to make the video on. So without further ado, let's begin. Now there were hundreds of questions which I have received in my seminars as well as when I used to fly. Chris, can you put it on the digital display so that I can read it easily? You know, we have received the emails and though we cannot discuss the hundreds of queries, we have shortlisted the most common ones. Oh, that's good. Thank you. The first query is How do pilots start an airplane? Do you need a key like starting a car? Well, airplanes are manufactured using advanced technology. So just as in a modern automobile, you don't need a key. In an airplane is done with a switch that generates a spark to initiate the process of combustion after which the system takes over and everything is automatic. Are you allowed to leave the cockpit? Well, of course not. Cockpits are never left unattended. Even if the autopilot is engaged, a specific procedure must be followed if one of the two cockpit crew members must leave for any reason. Moving on, that's a big question. I have on occasion seen four cockpit crew members flying an airplane. How many pilots is a flight required to have? Interesting. The flight crew complement or the required crew members is heavily dependent on the aircraft type and the flight duration. For example, on narrow body aircraft such as the Boeing 737s or the Airbus 320s, there are always two pilots required, the captain and the co-pilot. However, on long-haul flight aircraft such as the Boeing 777s or the 747s and the Airbus 350s or the 380s, they require one or two additional set of crew members based on the maximum number of hours each pilot can work. Where is where do pilots sleep? Well, in aircraft designed for short and medium distance flights, there is no designated space for pilots to rest. However, on long haul flights, there is a crew rest compartment with beds that the pilots can take turns using them. Can you explore the places you fly to on duty? Yes, of course we can when we have sufficient time, such as a day in between our flights. Can explore the destinations we fly to. I have read the food for fly crew is not the same as the passengers have on board. Why? You read it correctly. For safety reasons, captains and copilots consume different set of meals so that in the event of food poisoning or allergic reaction to one of the crew members, the other pilot can take over the controls and declare an emergency and land the aircraft safely. Can you fly all models of aircraft? Well, as with your driver's license, pilots too can only fly airplanes that are listed on their flying license due to the varying technical specifications of each aircraft.
do Paulus get scared? Yes, of course, in general, we share the same fear as you because we are also humans first. But as a pilot on the job or intensive, training enables us to remain calm and logical, even in the face of the most challenging and difficult emergencies. Will the pilot turn the plane around if I forgot something at the airport security, such as my phone? Well, once the aircraft doors are closed and the engines are started on the tarmac, it is impossible to turn back because you forgot something. So please ensure you carry all your belongings with you, especially after the screening process has been completed. Why do flights to the Middle East or Saudi Arabia depart in the middle of the night? That is an extremely intriguing question. Well, in countries with extremely high temperatures, airplanes cannot carry their maximum passenger and cargo loads due to performance issues. It not only affects the airline industry's profit margins, but also causes passenger inconvenience due to load restrictions. Consequently, flights to the Middle East or to the Saudi countries are rescheduled for summer, that is the midnight departures. How do you deal with intoxicated or disrespectful passengers who do not comply with flight rules? There is a protocol we must adhere to. If a drunk passenger attempts to board, we reserve the right to deny boarding. And in flight, passenger receives sufficient warnings, followed by restraint if necessary by landing at the nearest suitable airport and handing over the passenger to the security over there. Why do we keep window shades up during takeoff and landing? And close them during flight. Flight attendants and passengers must be able to see outside during an emergency evacuation in order to determine if it is safe to open and use an emergency exit. If the engine on that side is still running or is on fire, you do not want to send a passenger out the overwing exit. Therefore, you must always keep the window shades up during taxi takeoff and landing so that you can report any abnormal situation. Why must the cabin lights be dimmed or reduced during takeoff and landing? The dimming of cabin light occurs only when it is dusk, dawn, or nighttime outside the airplane. Again, this is a safety precaution. According to reports, it takes between 10 and 30 minutes for our eyes to adjust to a dark environment. Dimming the lights can help eyes adjust to lower light levels. If everyone must evacuate the aircraft at night, the few seconds it takes for your eyes to adjust to low light conditions could determine whether or not the evacuation is successful. In low light, emergency lighting and lit walkaways will also be more visible. Why is it constantly so cold on planes? Using zone controllers, the temperature within the cabin is managed, that is the forward cabin and the aft cabin. A portion of the chill is caused by the aircraft exterior surface being exposed to temperatures ranging anywhere from between minus 40 to minus 55 degrees Celsius, which are transmitted to the interior in certain ways via metal to metal contact. Physiological condition known as hypoxia increases the likelihood of passing out during flight. It occurs when the tissues of the body are deprived of oxygen. High cabin pressure and warm temperatures can intensify this reaction. If people's body temperatures vary, airlines maintain a low cabin temperature for safety reasons. This is unfortunate for those who shiver at the slightest breeze but layering up is preferable to losing consciousness next to you. Rest assured that this is actually for your benefit. Can pilots have tattoos? 
Well, a tattoo has no bearing on a pilot's ability to perform their duties effectively. Airlines want the general public to view the pilots as competent and trustworthy. They do not wish to undermine this image. Many passengers continue to view tattoos as unprofessional, prompting airlines to proceed with caution. If you want to be a pilot but do not have a license yet, you should reconsider obtaining a tattoo because it could affect your future employment. Am I allowed to enter the cockpit to meet you or another pilot? It is no longer possible to visit the flight deck or even sit in the cockpit during takeoff or landing. However, each airline has a different policy regarding cockpit visits. After landing, when the aircraft is completely shut down, despite all the current security precautions, cockpit visits are still possible on the majority of airlines so you just be sure to inquire with the flight attendant beforehand and be prepared to hear a big no if you are invited respect the pilot's time by requesting permission before you start taking any photographs is being an airline pilot a stressful profession because of the workload responsibilities and safety of thousands of passengers with transport around the globe, being an airline pilot can be a very stressful occupation. It is ranked amongst the top three most stressful careers in the world. Nevertheless, unlike other professionals, pilots are believed to be specially susceptible to stress. What is the hardest and the most dangerous part of flying an airplane? Takeoffs and landings are widely regarded as the most hazardous phase of a flight as there is very little time or altitude to react if a problem arises. Do pilots experience boredom in the cockpit? I would not say that they don't get bored. Flying the same route to the same destinations can become monotonous for some pilots. Despite this, no two flights are identical. What do pilots do when not flying? Well, the majority of pilots are either resting, exercising, or spending time with family, friends, relatives, or even preparing for their next day flights. Can pilots grow their beard? Well, it's become a very common trend these days that the boys have been growing their beards. But to answer this question, yes, pilots can grow beards to a limited extent. There was contention that the facial hair prevented the oxygen mask from fitting properly. But according to research, there is no difference between the bodily functions of pilots with and without facial hair. However, to ensure passenger safety, some airlines continue to adhere to these regulations. While in some airlines, the emergency oxygen mask is not the only concern, there are grooming standards that airlines adhere to. To engender passenger confidence, airline pilots must maintain a high level of professionalism. Pilots must appear dependable and accountable. Therefore, pilots maintain a very professional appearance. They need to look their best while walking through the airport as well as we get a lot of admiration from the passengers around us. Is traveling on bigger airplanes safer than flying on smaller ones? First and foremost, flying is the safest mode of transportation in the world. Regardless of the size, all airplanes in the transportation category must adhere to the highest level of safety and standards governed by the regulatory bodies of different nations under the system of one level of safety. Therefore, regardless of whether you're flying on a large jet or a smaller aircraft, you can relax and enjoy the flight. So the next query has two parts. I'll go ahead with the part A. 
Is it necessary to keep the nose of a jet plane constantly lowered to compensate for the Earth's curvature? Uh, this is an intriguing inquiry. Well, during a level flight, an aircraft will maintain its attitude and follow the globe's curvature, but will not gain altitude. Part B of the question is, would a plane trim for straight and level flight gain altitude if the Earth's surface fell away due to the curvature? Well, continuing with the same explanation, in actuality, a constant altitude must be maintained using standard pressures, which necessitates maintaining a constant distance from the Earth's center of gravity, resulting in a curved linear path. Therefore, geometrically speaking, an airplane does not fly in a straight line. Okay. Moving on, does flying west get you to your destination faster than flying east? I wish it was true, but the short answer to your query is no. As the Earth's rotation also affects our plane, we are spinning away from a destination while it is spinning towards us. Let me explain you. What you see here is the rotation of the Earth, which influences the duration of air travel. Now let's reconstruct this in order to gain a better understanding of the situation. First, as the Earth spins, gravity pulls the air through which planes travel. A commercial airliner cannot fly faster than the Earth rotates. Due to its inability to match the Earth's rotational speed, a westbound plane travels east just like the rest of the world. It simply possesses engines that enable it to travel east at a slightly slower rate than everything else, causing it to move west relative to the Earth. Now, due to the winds such as jet streams that generates either tailwinds or headwinds, the duration of flight is affected by the direction in which your plane is flying and not because you're flying east or you're flying west. Now, this is an interesting one. Why did the pilot not land the airplane during monsoon or winter season when I could see the ground below? This definitely needs an explanation. Now, to land on the runway, pilots rely on slant range visibility. Whereas as passengers, you observe the vertical visibility that is directly from where you are seated to the ground below. When flying in poor weather factors such as fog, very heavy rain, blowing dust, snow, etc., hinder runway acquisition due to the limited slant range visibility. The pilots could see the ground below, but not the runway, which is at an angle making it difficult to locate the precise touchdown point. The approach cannot be completed above the minimum height required to establish visual contact. Therefore, a misapproach is required to ensure your safety. I guess this is the last one. What happens when lightning strikes a plane? Modern aircrafts are designed to resist lightning strikes. As part of the certification process, they must pass specific lightning tests to ensure impact resistance. The fuselage or the body of an aircraft functions as an electromagnetic wave blocking container. The energy and electric charge or the lightning bolt travels through the exterior of the airplane, shielding the interior from any voltage, striking the plane's relatively sharper edges such as the wingtip or nose before exiting through the tail. When a plane is stuck by lightning, the pilots inspect all systems to ensure they are functioning properly. For safety reasons, aircraft stuck by lightning during flight are subjected to a post-landing inspection, despite the fact that in the vast majority of cases, the aircraft is undamaged or sustains only minor damage. So in conclusion, lightning strikes do not pose a serious safety risk.
frequently pilots are quite proud of their aircraft. It is difficult to comment the landing because there are so many variables that are involved in the process. You are not instructed to aim for a smooth landing, but sufficient force to activate the spoilers to provide effective braking action. There are times when a soft landing is actually undesirable. If the wind is strong or the surface is wet, I will land a little harder on purpose. However, most passengers don't understand why, making it difficult for them to determine whether the landing was technically excellent or not. We certainly appreciate your well wishes, but all we care about is whether you felt safe and comfortable during the flight and that you arrived at your destination safe and sound. So that's it guys. Before I sign off, please do not forget to subscribe for more informative videos. Take good care of yourself. Safe travels. Wishing you all a very happy new year. Think bye. Have a nice day. Uh, 133 decimal 53. 133 decimal 53 today. Thank <laughs> you.